so uh for today's video um for the another episode um this should be a vlog but i made oh my god I know. <laughs> but i made a video out of it so i'm i don't think i'll call this a book review anymore but this is really more of a book reaction because i react from cook i think book review review has more of a guideline or how do you format so um karon lahi nisha lahi nisha nga book review because the book is not yet published the author shared this to me and honestly i made a video out of it because kana mauwoman would go like <laughs> to say my reaction to to the author directly so this is the book just a lawyer drawing sports icons um autobiography art instructional and poster book so just from the title you will know that the <clears throat> the author is a lawyer and then he's into sports and then he writes so sana all <laughs> so uh it the, the writer is uh Cibuano. anyway i love autobiography i think na i time na puros lang autobiography biography memoirs or anything written about that person akong gibasa so i think um on top of my head uh, i don't know but um how yung uh, ano daw is the book uh, howard schultz the founder of the, the founder i think the founder of starbucks yeah it's a nice biography like i think siya gidang nagsuwat but get the very first book because i think duha ka book yang libro the released but get the very first book atong nagsugod pa ang Starbucks and then i think the last is a memoir i think uh, when breath becomes air it's about dying about new year surgeon on his way to his um passing so from capitalista to dying <laughs> so what i really like about autobiography biography or life stories is the tea <laughs> it's the marites in me the tea let's see we're the autobiography from an author's point of view and sometimes by like you read about them in newspaper and then lahi ang take from a writer or from another person's of view but then when you read the experience from ilahag yung point of view lahi sad and you will probably have makasabot ka la, like why why were they being an asshole <laughs> about the dirty <laughs> dirty details of how they do their like their business or whatever so the thing is that wala pa ko kabasa biography of an artist right off the bat i'm thinking i'm uh, mag lisod could relate to this book because i'm not into sports but i see hidden Diaz on the cover so i'm like ah i'm an hidden Diaz fan girl my art my art capital is so pop culture. Like it's probably one of the frustrations. Okay, di ko kabaw. Like, how do you actually appreciate art? Like, yeah, like how do I relate to it? Please tell me. So first things first, I have to keep in mind that this book is dedicated to his family, to his mom, dad, his wife, I think his brothers and relative cousins, and then his son so it's one of the reason that he wrote this is that i think the first uh first few chapters first 50 pages is about uh wait and kim ong knows is about is about his story about growing up until he became a lawyer a snippet of how he got married or something and, and uh, like he talked about his mom who encouraged him to be an artist so her mom um signed up uh, marvidal to to teach him art so like first of the but so he talks about marvidal and then he talks about golf and i feel like oh this is rich kid <laughs> so Mar, this one this author is rich kid he got marvidal and golf like oh my god i cannot relate so so i think first comment right now is like i wish more marites please like m like tea details i don't know what but first like her mom like what does your mom i mean not like you know like some grand 
thing like oh what say favorite arts a young mom ana ana and then i wish he also put more tea about marvidal because honestly if i don't know marvidal i cannot connect it to he really has a great teacher because the yeah, teacher is Marvidal, so I wish he put more tea about Marvidal. Because uh, I know Marvidal because I have a rich auntie. <laughs> if I didn't know Marvidal, I was like, oh, okay, he must just be another like uh, art teacher. But so, yeah, give me a Kardashian, a reality show. And ooh, I think another thing that he mentioned here is he went to Manila to study for his law like university and then law so i i also wish he expound more on like his how do you call that his being provinciano in a of course like he's from cebu and he's like rich kid like there's really not much how do you call that probably difference of being here and in manila but it will also be nice to like you know have a to see like how it is to be a provinciano in a big city and then after that he came home and then uh, yeah he became a lawyer so I think also like that part like uh, what's the struggle of like becoming a lawyer like taking the bar blah 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 and then after that he be he took over like he 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 was the leader in the Cebu Golf Country Club like he took leadership in that and then under his leadership he said that Okay, they were a little golf, but under his leadership, um, he mentioned uh, they got a lot of awards and championships. So I wish he can also talk about like you know that part, like like how they get funding. Probably they don't need funding right because they're rich kids. But you know how they train, how they I know like um, you know just you know the tea, the tea. <laughs> Oh, another one is that about his love story with his wife because his wife is actually, I learned from this that his wife is actually an artist also who studied in France, San Francisco, USA. Rich kids, guy, rich kids. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like their love story and then them becoming, being married, like what's their routine? Like, do they do art session together? Like, do they go to, how do you call this? museums and see like what's their favorite art art or like how they view art like you know what what how they like i want to know like how do these people appreciate art ah yeah he also talks that he had a, a heart surgery because he has a chd congenital heart is the disease i have a friend who's i don't know if this is the same but i have a friend whose son has a CHD and it, she kind of like, how do you call this, uh, detailed her experience on Facebook and it's it's a rare, I don't know it's a rare but it's, there's not much known about, not, it's not not much known but I think it's a rare case in a way so there's a CHD awareness day. We should talk more about it but I think I have to keep in mind that this book is dedicated to his family, so somehow Ian, probably Ian main audience is the family, so he does not need to go into details about, you know, their love story, about his CHD um, journey, blah, 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 blah. But guys, I want tea. I want Maritas. <laughs> the next part is more about his journey of his art. Um, yeah, because diba na, na golf siya, nag school siya, na lawyer siya, so somehow um, he gets separated from his art. So the next part is about being reacquainted to art. So there's a part where he's about validation. He discuss validation. So there are like, uh, he, probably he's so millennial and he's capitalist. <laughs> so there's a chapter i don't know like he compiles the facebook interaction he has like the likes and the comments and uh, am i like old school or something but i never like i never thought like it's somehow like people like get how do you call that validation or some yeah from social media from facebook 
And so I think any artist or anyone, like any person, it's human instinct. We need validation. We need attention. So his way of kind of getting validation, if, if someone will pay his art, which is like, yes, that should be. There's no time for becoming a starving artist or struggling artist. This guy, no way to struggling artist. So, I mean, it just never occurred to my mind that, yeah, you can actually get validation when you get paid for it. Of course it is, but it probably it's something you can learn from this. So, I, I'm having a hard time like re-relating re to the art because I'm probably wrong in categorizing it as fan art. But, I mean, I'm a big fan of BTS, like K-pop. Like, I know there's a lot of artists like... Um, making uh, illustrations art about uh, bts or their k-pop idols so this is something uh, uh, sia is more on like the sports icon and the like, glisu relate because well okay i'm not a basketball fan i'm not not a golf not not at all oh. but wala man ate runner diri siya gihimo or any triathlete so it's basically basketball he's an definitely like um, how do you call that? 90s kids? 80s kids? Sorry. <laughs> but I think same age or yan yan. But she, but na asi Hidalin Diaz. So I'm like, ah, it's weird. But when I get to the part of Hidalin Diaz, I'm like, I feel so emotional. <laughs> na emotional ko when I see Hidalin, pagkita na ako na Hidalin Diaz. And I feel like crying. So probably this is the effect of his art to people who are fan of this sports icon like Efren Reyes, Manny Pacquiao, uh, Michael Schumacher. This is some of the... Then Michael Jordan. Oh, I know Michael Jordan, but I don't really have a attachment to that guy. But you know, 80s, 90s, sorry, 90s kids. You watch Michael Jordan because everybody watches it on VHS day. So I think one of the things that I wish he also put was like um, more tea about the sports icon. Like, but I think that's probably a different ball game already for him. Like, this is art which is already take a lot of time to make, and then and then writing about the person like. Yeah, I like I kind of wanna somehow he puts like more anecdotes or like you know insights inside <laughs> a bit of inside story that I do not know so that the uh, you, you know like introduce more the person like a funny way that you relate to this. So when I get to the hidden in the ass part, I'm like. <laughs> It's so cute like it touches me like there's a different emotional effect on me so i guess this is the this is probably how it feels to the fans of the other sports icon here when they see Manny Pacquiao or the other names yeah he also under the there's also a chapter here or chapters here where he explains his process his art process like um, how he draw like there's a step one step two step three as a kind of tigansil you or a crochet or a knit like yeah I can relate to that on on sa ani mo pag himo ang iyang art but for a person na dili <laughs> for a person who is not into art like yeah what is this man talking about <laughs> so, other from sports icon he has yeah I like the Batman. He make like there are two like three art that kind of like pops up in me the Hidalin Diaz of course because I'm a Hidalin Diaz fan then the Batman I'm not a fan of Batman but uh, I'm like this is I I like the I like his illustration of or his own version of Batman maybe because it's colorful <laughs> see that's my that's my criteria of art <laughs> if it's colorful or something and then I also love the Santo Nino because he's do he doodles it. Uh, he, he also draws an eagle, which is nice. First, the part with, the but anyway, there's a yeah, here the Santo Nino because he kind of like doodles it. And I love doodles, like, I love doodle arts. 
so this is something different from the sports icon yeah i i really love the santonino art also so i guess i'll end this with an excerpt from the chapter realization summary of what i learned from this book is um okay in those instances i endured long phases of separation from things most dear to me I was separated from art, from golf, and from the woman who would become my wife, but I stubbornly did not dwell on the detachment aspect of separation. Instead, I viewed separation as the creation of spaces in between two subjects that leave the room for them to grow. Oh, it's so nice to have put this in a visual art. <laughs> And grow I did. After my Manila student days, I grew to become a better golfer. After being away from the wife, I grew to become a better partner. And after nearly two decades of art hibernation, I grew to become a better artist. Bye.